You won't believe how long it took me to build this brand new house that's based on a hotel from a ski resort and a beautiful bridge connecting our last build area to our new one. I also begin phase two of this let's play adding some new features as well as building a basic snow farm too. Let's create. Welcome to phase two. This area here in front of the mountains is going to be home to phase two of our create mod let's play where we're going to be doing a whole lot of building. There's going to be more trains, big factories, workshops, food stuff, you name it, this area is going to have it. But in order to do all of the things that I want to do, I've made a few changes to the mod pack. First of all, I've got rid of time control. We're going to have the normal length daylight cycle, which means I'm going to be sleeping a whole lot more, but the time has been adjusted to actually reflect the proper time in the game. I've also got rid of the better F3 screen, as well as the Make Bubbles Pop mod, and I've also got rid of better animations collection, which means pigs look normal again. But that's just the things we've got rid of. I've added a whole new type of backpacks. Let's be honest, the Traveler's backpacks are pretty useless. They really don't have that much space. The fluid system's pretty pointless, and this crafting grid in the corner here is really annoying. So the sophisticated backpacks are going to allow us to carry a whole bunch more stuff and have a much better time carrying around all of our equipment. I've also added the create diesel generators mod to allow us to build diesel generators and fuel them with biodiesel and they've also added the create bells and whistles add-on which allows you to just add a few more little things to your train so with all those changes to the game we should probably get cracking and we're going to start by turning around my delorean hopping in and going for a ride back to our old town i do love this car Oops. And the reason we're heading back here is because you guys have given us a whole bunch of names for all of these things. So thanks to my usual antics decided, this town should be called Hill Valley, in reference to the Back to the Future references from the last video. And it wasn't just them that thought that. In fact, Drago Hughes decided this should be Hill Valley Station, which makes sense if it's in Hill Valley. And the train is not going to be called Hill Valley Train. It's actually going to be called The Flying Fox, thanks to Victor Smith and the Reverend Down, who both decided that was the best name for this train. So now now when we get on and we control it, it says now controlling the flying fox. The other reasons we're in this area is because if we're going to start building things in our new area, well, we're really going to need some materials to start building with, but also I want to make a good backpack. So let's make a backpack. Let's take our rubbish one off and put this good one on. I don't know how to put it on. So I can put it in my chest slot, but then how do I put it like my jetpack on as well? Can I not have them both? I've had to add a new mod. I've added the Curios API mod to allow me to have a backpack and a head slot there as well, which is pretty cool. And I can turn the visibility on and off. Very nice. And if you want a copy of the updated version of this mod pack, then head to my Discord for a link to all of the mods as well as downloads for Multi-NC and CurseForge as well. Right, this backpack needs some upgrades. So I'll make a stack upgrade tier one, tier two, tier three. Okay, we've got big old stack upgrades in there now. A crafting upgrade, a tool swapper upgrade, an advanced tool swapper upgrade ah, i upgrade the whole backpack like this iron backpack gold backpack diamond backpack does that give me way more room wow it does and a whole bunch of upgrade slots as well tell you what though definitely gonna need some netherite oh everlasting upgrade is a bit expensive hmm. and i think i'm gonna go for this refill upgrade and then convert that to the advanced refill upgrade and that's all of my upgrade slots done this is incredible so the question now is how many stacks of items can i get per slot with this stack of upgrade tier three how much can i put in i can get 512 that's not too bad but in order to get the next level of upgrade i need blocks of netherite eight blocks of netherite jeez that's not gonna happen anytime soon well i've taken a little bit of time and i've managed to get in all of the bare essentials that i want in here so it's got most of my create stuff all of my jewels and things like that and a whole bunch of building blocks and stuff at the bottom here but nothing really that's going to help me doing actual building now, this is all great for just being able to craft stuff and when you need it but it's not going to actually help me carry a bunch of a load of building materials like these backpacks do and it also hasn't given me a bed see these backpacks have got beds built in so what i might do is just take one of these backpacks with me and just pop that backpack inside of that one well things might have just got a little bit silly i've upgraded it again i got rid of the auto tool switcher and added in another stack tier three upgrade and now i can have 4096 items per stack but i've still got no room what will give me a bit more room though is this brand new trailer that i've just added to the delorean 
DeLorean. This trailer has all of the fancy things I need. It's got a carpenter's workbench, a mason's workbench, it's got a stone cutter crafting table, and room for a whole bunch of storage. The only downside to it is I can't actually access any of these things while it's actually a machine. So what we'll need to do is park up somewhere, pop a station down wherever we're going, and disassemble the train so I can use them. Now there is one other annoying thing to this, so every time I disassemble the train, those two frame floorboards and my iron disappears, which means it costs me two blocks of iron to rebuild this thing every time I rebuild it. But once it's placed here, I can actually access all of these tables and used everything that I need. I better load it up. And with all those amazing items, we can then reassemble the machine. And I'm not even going to bother putting the floorboards back on the top because they keep disappearing. There we go. Assemble train. DeLorean done. And off we go. We can go over to our new area and start building that bridge. That's enough of that. Would you believe all of that took a whole day? Nine in the morning till 7 p.m. at night, I was building this bridge, creating crazy contraptions to dig out my tunnel a bit more, building crazy contraptions to actually fill the tunnel in with bricks, sort of, making a complete mess of my track system, which I've now re-diverted to make it a little bit more flat and less awkward, and it still doesn't even go anywhere. And it's used all of my tough. These few bits I've got here are all I've got left. And if I quickly turn those back into normal tough, it's not even five whole stacks worth. The good news is I am very happy with the bridge. It's got a lovely little ornate design. I like the smoothness of the top bits up there as well as all of the jaggedy bits of the diagonal blocks. I think the whole thing looks great. But this video is not about building bridges. It's about building hotels. Or more importantly, somewhere for us to live in this area while we start building everything. And we're going to be building that hotel roughly around about this little area here where all of the hummingbirds live. Hello. But in order to build the hotel, I'm going to need a bunch more resources. And I could really do with my little mobile storage system actually over there where we're going to be building but i've kind of run out of time to build any more track today the resources i need is basically dark oak which we'll find in the dark forest which is 2,000 blocks away and putting that onto our map that's all the way over there across an ocean so pretty much pointless trying to take trains or horses over there we might as well just use our jetpacks speaking of jetpacks and backpacks though i had an idea you see this new mod allows us to put our backpack on our actual back Whereas these backpacks, you can just put on like that. So now I can basically wear my jetpack as well as two backpacks at the same time and access both of their inventories while they're on my back, which feels a little bit cheaty, but I'll take it. Right then, Dark Forest, here we come. Wait a minute, we have found things on the way there. There is a water village, apparently. What have you got, guys? Diamonds! Rhinestones, lava, got a little tower over here. Anything worth nicking in here? Surely there's a chest in this building somewhere. No? You're all very stingy. Hey, guys. Oh, you got a barrel. What's in your barrel? Nothing. Nothing. Jeez. We've got an anvil. I'll take the anvil. Oh, is this one of these magic arm stands with loads of armor on it? No, it's just one. But it's iron armor with the vex and tied armor trims. Very fancy. And I'll take that banner as well, because that's quite fancy. Oh, and look, it's nighttime again. I have slept so many times. It's crazy the difference in how often I have to go to bed now that I've turned that time control mod off. And wow, is that all dark oak? It is dark oak and quite scary. There's a witch. 
Of course there's a witch. There's a ravager. Okay. Uh, yeah, mate, we, uh, we might not want to mess with him. And an enderman. Oh, Jesus. The forbidden forest. Well, that probably explains it, really, doesn't it? So where's the actual dark forest, then? Because that forbidden forest is a little bit scary. Oh, and what's this? Wow. Look at this church. It's huge. Wow. Look at this place. It's massive. Oh, I haven't got glowberries. I'll take those. Thank you very much. What do you got, guys? Bread. Great. Right, anyway, I'm getting distracted. Where's the dark oak forest? Which is the tiniest of dark forests. <laughs> In fact, there's very little dark forest here at all. There's an owl. A pootu. Hello, Putu. Look at this guy. I always wanted one of these. I don't know what it is, but I always wanted one. Of your eyes are on the side of your head. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, ah, what's this? A moth. Why is a moth attacking me? Moths are supposed to be nice. Don't attack me. What did you give me? Moth scales. What's this place? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What is that? Uh, Hey, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, purple fire. No. Oh, my goodness. Um, how do I always find myself in these situations? Well, I definitely need to take this guy out, whoever he is and whatever he is. Where did you go? Where'd the guy go? Where did he go? Where did you go? Oh, he's vanished. He just, he just literally disappeared. Okay. All right. Anyway, Dark Oak. Oh, hang on a minute. What's this? More stuff. Illunite. Budding Illunite. Oh, it's almost... It kind of makes amethyst noise, but not quite. Sick shard. What's this type of mushroom? Right, anyway. Dark oak. Mechanical saw, hand crank, chop me down a tree. Now, how many saplings did we get? Oh, quite a lot. Good. Oh, loads. Ah, the vex. Look, it's bedtime again. How is it always bedtime? I'm poisoned. This cave spiders. Help me, little lighthouse. Oh, it's a pillager one. Oh, jeez. Where can I put my bed? Nowhere's safe. Can I put it in a tree? I can. Well, that really didn't take too long. I've got a whole bunch of dark oak saplings, a whole bunch of dark oak wood, and we've had quite the experience in this place. Jeez. Although I do want to kind of sneak back to that forbidden forest and just see what's going on in there. Oh, look, I think it's mushroom. Shroom's got a shroom like. What did he say? Oh, and apparently a seagull just nicked off with one of my golden carrots. There's a lot of cave spiders. Oh, my goodness me. I love the colours. I love the colours of the grass. I love the colours of the bushes and the leaves. It's gorgeous, this little biome. If only it wasn't so evil and trying to eat me. Oh, and the leaves are made of mangrove roots. That's really interesting. Just a shame there's nothing particularly interesting to get, but I guess this would make a good place to make a mob farm if you get all of these horrible mobs spawning here. What will they think of next? What a gorgeous biome. And now that I'm back home, the first thing I need to do is sort this machine out so that it grows dark oak instead of normal oak. Oh geez, all of the trees are growing. Okay, so I think with this layout the contraption should be able to reach every single sapling in order to replant it and cut it down and they should all have space to grow. Let's stick all of the dark oak saplings in there. Turn this thing back on again. Oh, and it's... Oh, jeez. Good job. <laughs> Glue the saws back on. Turn it back on again. There we go. Oh, and one's grown already. That was quick. Nice. Is it going to be able to chop it down okay? It did. Oh, that's fantastic. And it's now depositing everything through there. Brilliant. Okay. Now I've got a dark oak farm. The only problem is this area is not loaded when I'm over there. And there's two ways we could deal with that. We could set this as the spawn chunks and have this always loaded because it's spawn chunks. But I think there's quite a lot of things that would cause a lot of lag if we do that. The other option would be to make one of these chunk loaders. However, it requires a beacon, which requires a nether star. And because there's no recipe for nether stars, that means the only way to get one is to kill the wither, which means you need, yeah, you know, you know the drill. There is another way I could do it. And that is, to get my laptop plumbed in with all of the mobs I've got on here and just have an AFK account set up over here running that. Now, I could either open this world up to LAN, which would be a good idea, or I could set it up as a server, which would mean that, well, my PC's not having to process too much either. And there we go. We're now running on a server and Chuck is here to do some AFK for me. Now, I can hear the sounds of a wandering trader kicking about around here. Oh, and it's bedtime. Of course it is. Oh, here he is. Down the back. Well, what have you got? Nothing. Abs oh, jeez. Get out of it. I don't know why you even exist. Although I do need the leather. Anyway, it's time to grab a bunch of this dark oak wood. Oh, the map. The map has not got all of the things on it that it used to have, and all my waypoints have gone. But all the stuff I've built is still here, so I'm sure it'll be all right. We can add more waypoints in. So design-wise, I want this place to look like a ski resort. It's going to look like a ski resort, but it's actually going to contain a whole bunch of industrial stuff and things going on. You know, the sort of things that I like to build. But as a result, the type of building is going to be different from what we did back in Hill Valley. For a start, there's going to be a whole bunch of snow, not just on these mountains, but all over this area and all the builds that we're going to build. And 
kind of want to build big old ski lodges and hotels like these. So lots and lots of wood, lots and lots of snow, lots of light coloured stone and white colours, really nicely glowing in the dark, multi-level. I think this is going to look pretty good. Okay, let's build a hotel. So the first order of business was to fill in a few holes around the area, dealing with creepers that popped out of the caves and then clearing out a bit of a flat space for us to build the foundation. And then I needed to sleep. After sleeping, I filled out the terrain a little bit and then went back to Hill Valley in order to make diorite. And I crafted the diorite using the quartz that we got from our gold farm and the cobblestone we got from our cobblestone generator. Why would I use diorite? Well, I wanted a foundation that would blend in with the snowy surroundings and wouldn't look too out of place. So I crafted up a bunch of the less contrasting diorite blocks using the mason's workbench and filled in the foundation. And then I had to sleep. Once the foundation was down, I was able to create the layout of the hotel using stripped dark oak for the corners and tough blocks. Now, I really wanted sort of a brownie grey cobbly effect block mix, but nothing like that exists in this mod pack, so I was kind of stuck with tough. Rather than using the reds and the pine coloured woods from the photo I was taking inspiration from, I decided to go with darker wood in order to contrast against the snow a little bit more, and because there's no really pine coloured woods available in this pack. You could argue acacia's closer, but I don't have any acacia, and it's a bit too vibrant for what I was going for. Then I had to sleep. Once I'd finished sleeping, I added some texture using frame blocks, and I used dark oak windows and doors to add in windows and doors. And then I had to sleep. Once that night had passed, I was able to add in a little area with a fireplace and finish the ground floor layout. Then, using more frame blocks and some spruce fences, I was able to add the balconies and start on the first floor, which was going to be using a variation of vertical dark oak plants. I was using the dark oak windows as sliding doors, but they don't really open, so some of the rooms have closed doors and some of them have open ones. Then I had to sleep. I then added a whole bunch of beams on the inside using variations of dark oak blocks, and then I added in some spruce floors. For the second floor, I basically just repeated what I did on the first floor with a few different tweaks to it, and then I had to sleep. And once that sleep was finished, it was time to start tackling the roof, which I used slope frame blocks for in order to create massive large overhangs and that lovely slope that you get on these types of buildings. And to make all of the roof slopes fit together, I used a variation of angled and prism frame blocks in the corners to make everything meet up nicely. Then I had to sleep. And that brings us to now. Well, I'm about four hours in and it's nowhere near finished. I've got pretty much the outside structure completely done. The roof still needs texturing. I'm not just going to leave it blank. There's absolutely no interior at all other than a bunch of beams and some slabs where I was expecting there to be some rooms. We're also going to need staircases, furniture, all of the equipment we're going to be using in here. There's still so much to do, but I am really quickly running out of time to record this video. Whoa! Ah! To record this video and get it out to you guys. So for the roof, I'm kind of thinking snow. So we can sort of make the roof look very nice and white and Christmassy like this. We can maybe add a few bits in that look like sort of roof belt with snow dotted around it. But my worry there is what's going to happen on the underneath because we don't really want the underneath of this to look like it's got snow on ideally the underside wants to look like wood but then you get these really sharp angles which probably look okay from a distance but up close just kind of looks a bit weird the other option would just be to have the outside of the roof with no snow on it at all and then you can get that nice wood effect not that this is the right wood to use and then we could have snow on the inside with the felt roof looking stuff sticking out in places that might just work but ideally i'd really like it if the snow would like just stick up a little bit through it but without looking totally gross maybe i could use snow layers or well, providing they've got something to support them underneath that might not be a bad idea but because snow melts i'll probably end up using a variation of frame blocks with trap doors and floorboards and that sort of thing so that we can get different levels without having to worry about the snow melting when we've got lights on the inside of this building but that's going to take a whole bunch of time and speaking of time i miss time control so i'm adding it back on again we're gonna have 20 minutes a day again and five minutes of night and that is going to affect our day count a little bit but that's absolutely fine i'd rather be able to enjoy this world than having to keep sleeping every 10 minutes it, it, it is it does drive you crazy believe it or not during that last build montage i actually slept over 20 times which is crazy it's absolutely ridiculous right anyway snow if i'm going to be texturing this roof i'm going to need a whole bunch of snow and i really don't want to decimate any more of this mountain in order to get it. So it's snow farm time. So I'm going to need a pumpkin and to pick a room of this house to put in a snowman. I mean, I suppose it'd be helpful if I'd actually made the rooms, but I haven't yet. Well, I thought this used to generate snow, but it doesn't seem to. Oh, that still works. How can we do this with create? Now, the first question I've got is, can our snowman put snow onto a conveyor belt? And the answer seems to be no. 
Well, that's a shame. Okay, can our snowman friend put snow on a depot? And the answer is no. Well, you suck. Now, this might seem like a crazy idea. If we did that, is that going to work? No. What about that? No. What about that? No. Can I put a funnel on a minecart hopper? No. Can I put track on top of one of those funnels? I cannot. Oh, man, this all just sucks. Now, I can hopper onto a belt. I'm hoping if I was to give this a shovel and put it into use mode, that's going to get the snow off there, turn it into snowballs again, to get picked up by the hopper minecart, go through the hopper, onto this conveyor, into this press, get turned into snow blocks and go into this chest. That's the plan. Oh no, it killed the snowman. Okay, snowman number two, please don't die. It's just breaking the block. Don't break the block. You'll break my shovel. Maybe it's because I had it on use mode instead of poke mode. Let's try that. Okay, that doesn't work at that level there. What if we did it at that level there? Well, it's not killing the snowman this time, but it's also not getting the snow. I guess the only thing I can do then is just stand here the old-fashioned way and just let the press turn all of the snowballs into actual snow blocks. Well, I've pretty much burnt out my shovel. It's got 60 uses left, so I probably shouldn't use it anymore. As a result, we've now got a full barrel full of snowballs here, a whole bunch of hoppers full of snowballs there, and a bunch of snow blocks being produced here. Right, I need to go fix my shovel now, though. Hello, train. XP, please. Now, another thing that needs fixing is this jetpack. It is just about bust. I'm really hoping that I can put mending on that and get that fixed as well. The question is, though, can it have mending on it? It can. But I haven't got any levels. A bunch of levels, please. Mending and unbreaking as well. Nice. Let's go fix it. That should just about do it. And there we go. Fully fixed. Wonderful. Now, these tanks have been very good, although I have run out of a couple of them. So I'm going to go fill those up now. A bit of water and a little bit more lava. And we're all full. Very good. Can you hear the music? You shouldn't be able to do because my music is off, which means there's a singing creeper somewhere, but I've got to find it. And it seems to be coming from the house. Must be underneath the house. There's a skeleton apparently right here. Oh, <gasps> there he is. It's a singing skeleton. Hey, what have you got that's making me? Oh, is it, in... is it a jukebox backpack? Thank you. You didn't give me the backpack though. Oh, you suck. What a sting. Well, that's plenty of snow to get us started. So let's get working on this roof. When I say working on the roof, I mean procrastinating by bringing all of this stuff inside. Eh. Oh, not again. I may have caused a bit of a problem. I've got the bottom half of a door and I can't put it back down. I can't change my inventory slot and I can't throw it. Maybe I can reconnect. Nope. No, that didn't work. Oh, jeez. How do I get rid of this door? Can I sleep? Um... Help, Clara S. Dark Oak Door. Please don't delete all my items. Oh, it, uh, no. Jeez. Oh, How do I fix this? I literally can't do anything. <laughs> ah, if I turn on drop carried when hit in the settings, I don't know if this will do anything because this is running on a server now, but hopefully if I fly up in the air and take some damage, it did nothing. Oh, jeez, I've got a door. I don't want a door. Okay, I've updated the settings on the server. Is it going to work now? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Go away, <laughs> stupid door. <laughs> Thank you. Jeez. So I'm hoping with these varieties of brain blocks, we can make this roof look like it's all covered in snow and snow that's not going to melt, which means I pretty much got to destroy a whole bunch of it. I'm going to do a small area first to see how it gets on, and then we'll go from there. Mm, I don't really like that. That's not coming out too well. It looks like it's too far into the roof. That kind of feels like it's a bit more piled on top of the roof, which is basically stripping away these thinner ones, leaving the bigger ones, and then basically using the trap doors, the slabs, the frame panels, some steel stairs, some full blocks, and other things like that in order to sort of just raise the level up off the actual roof a little bit. And I think that looks a whole lot better. Well, I have to say so far, I'm pretty happy with how that side of the roof's gone. I think that works pretty well, but the other side of the roof is still completely blank. So at the top, I'm trying to keep the snow a little bit thinner. I am replacing some of them with thicker blocks just to give the idea that it has thickened up a little bit. But in lots of places, I'm just actually putting the snow on the existing roof tiles. But then as you can see, as it gets down the roof, it tends to get a bit thicker to the point where it reaches the end of the roof and it's pretty thick. And I think that works well. Okay, so now that side of that part of the roof is done, but now that leaves me with this bit and that's going to be really tricky trying to integrate that together at the sides. But I think I'll manage now. Because this is a steeper slope than these ones, it's a much steeper gradient, it's a lot harder to then put in sort of flat bits and make them then marry up with the floor below without making the slope really shallow and without making the snow ridiculously thick. So what I think I'm going to have to do, realistically, is just thicken it up with a lot more blocks and stairs and things instead of the slabs on the other layers, which kind of works, but then if we use full blocks, 
it doesn't really work because the step's too big. So I think a lot of these elevated frame slabs are going to come in handy here. I might use the odd block just to give it some variation and some depth, but I don't think I'll use too many. Another type of frame block I can use in here are these little sort of steps, which will just help bring some of this together where it is a bit steep, such as on these big old blocks here. But I don't think it needs many. In fact, I'm pretty happy with how that whole side is without all of those. And there we go. The entire roof is now covered in snow, and I really like it. And I think from a distance that's going to stand out absolutely fantastically. I've put big old piles of snow in the corner as it's dripping down off these things and obviously clear underneath because it wouldn't get to that bit and I've done the same sort of thing on the other side with the pile coming down there and I've left all of the wood at the very edges ready to be trimmed with whatever colour or texture I actually do the roofs with. So all in all I think that looks fantastic and I used almost all of that snow. So now all I've got to do is pick a roof texture and I'm feeling spruce although it probably wants to be planned. Planks. Any diagonal planks? Diagonal would be really useful. So the reason for spruce rather than more dark oak is I just think it will stand out a bit nicer against the dark oak and the snow. And I really like those diagonals going up there like that. I'm not so sure about the top of the roof, but they look good. Or do they? I don't know. Maybe it does want to be dark oak. Perhaps it needs to be something a little bit more ornate. That doesn't look too awful. But I don't know if I like the spruce. Maybe it does want to be dark oak. Yeah, I think it's going to have to be dark oak. Maybe we could have dark oak at the edges and then spruce on the inside a little bit like that. Maybe that wouldn't look too bad. And there we go. The edges of our roof are done. I really like the patterns on those. I think it looks great all together. And that means that this hotel is completely finished on the outside. Except for the paths, of course. They'll have to be dealt with in the future. But all in all, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I think it looks great at the foot of that mountain. And I can't wait to see what the rest of the area around it's going to look like. Now I've just got to do the inside.